Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a question that's on everybody's mind. Is right now the sweet spot to buy a home? After months of watching and waiting, many homeowners are starting to wonder if right now might finally be the time to make their move. Rates are trending down, competition has cooled off, but will it last? In today's video, I'll break down why waiting to buy a home could actually cost you more in the long run. We'll talk about what's happening in the market right now. Plus, we'll hear from a couple of our amazing agents with some expert insight. And stick around until the end, and you'll, we'll give you the three best ways to prepare so that when you find the house that you love, you're ready to win that offer. So stick around. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give us a thumbs up, knock on that subscribe button and ring that doorbell for notification of all our latest videos as we're putting up new content weekly. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus and this is State 48 Homeowner. All right, first up, let's talk about why this could be the sweet spot for buyers. Over the past couple years, Many people were priced out of the market due to high mortgage rates and skyrocketing home prices. But right now, rates are actually trending down. And buyers who are on the sidelines are starting to jump back in. Here's what one of my colleagues, Craig Klaus, says about transaction count and buyer activity this fall. I think locally, it could be as early as the fourth quarter um, and potentially, if not, into the early part of the first quarter. I think we're going to really start to see activity and, and transaction counts pick up as more buyers enter the marketplace. As of now, mortgage payments on a typical home are actually 7% lower than last year and 13% lower than the peak of May of 2024. What does that mean for you? Simply put, affordability has improved. Now I know what you're thinking. Should I wait a little longer for rates to drop further? Hey, I get it. Most people have that itch to roll the dice and see if things can improve before taking action. But here's where things get tricky. And here's Steve to explain. Rates, mortgage rates, man, they are volatile. They are affected by so many different market conditions and factors, things that happen around the globe, here locally, and even just investor behavior. Unfortunately, rates will go up a lot faster than they go down. Um, those roller coaster style dips that we see in interest rates don't happen as frequently as the rises in interest rate due to investor fears. Now, let's say rates drop further. What'll happen? Affordability will increase, more people will think it's the best time to buy, and more buyers will come flooding back into the market, which would likely drive prices up again. In fact, a survey by Bankrate shows that over half of homeowners would jump right back in the market if rates drop below 6%. And that doesn't even include the renters who are on the sidelines waiting for rates to drop. And we're already in the sixes right now. So I had a client that had moved here from the Midwest. They were working with another agent and weren't getting an offer accepted. So they ended up coming to me. We sat down and talked. And when I explained what was going on in the market, his eyes were this big. He was an engineer and he had no idea what they had just sold their house out there and moved here to. So as we started looking at houses, realizing obviously we would have to be somewhat more aggressive on an offer, we went to a couple showings that were like the open house, only open for two hours. And there was like a whole line of people. I mean, 20, 30, 40 people deep, crazy. You walk through the house and you're kind of walking with everyone. And we came out, they were like super disappointed. Um, so we realized in they realized at that time too, we were gonna to have to be aggressive about an offer, um, but it was super frustrating. We went over asking price for the offer. They got lucky because it actually appraised at what we offered, but we were willing to waive the appraisal contingency to get them into the house. So that's not a fun market for anyone. So if you're thinking about buying now, now is the time versus waiting until there's a long lines again. That's right, and this is exactly what we need to be prepared for. As Nadia Evangelou from the National Association of Realtors explains, increased demand means higher competition, which can push home prices up. And she points out exactly what the data tells us. Those price increases offset the affordability gains from the lower mortgage rates. So what does that mean for you right now? Well, you've got an advantage, a window of opportunity where there are fewer buyers improving affordability, and more homes available than we've seen in quite a while. And if rates do drop in the future, you could have the opportunity to refinance without having to deal with any crazy competitive markets. But this window of opportunity might not last that long. 
Right now, the number of homes actively for sale has grown by 35.8% year over year, reaching its highest point since May of 2020. But if more buyers rush back into the market when rates dip into the fives, this supply could get gobbled up pretty fast. Prices could also start to rise again as competition heats up. Ten different major economic forecasters, from Goldman Sachs to Fannie Mae to Moody's, predict home appreciation in 2025 with an average of 2.6%. Craig Klaus talks about what that looks like in Arizona. Yeah, and home prices, again, like this is nationally. I think we're always out, typically out PC nationally. I, 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 you know, I think that the first half of next year, we're going to get a, a majority of our appreciation. Um, and, I, you know, we'll see. I, I think it's going to be higher than what they're showing here of the average of all 10. Um, but again, that's nationally. I think locally we'll be closer to the four to five or, or probably three and a half, four range. Mike Simonson from Altus Research says that today's mortgage payments are much more affordable compared to last year. But that affordability could be short-lived if demand spikes. So I asked Kenny Klaus if he thought we were at risk of seeing those 2021 levels of competition again if rates dipped further. Well, Scott, I'd say it's very possible, right? I mean, <clears throat> what's slowed the housing market down is when prices went up and then interest rates went up so quickly, the affordability became an issue. We know there's a lot of buyers out there in the market right now that want to buy and are just waiting for the right time because they yeah. keep hearing the media that rates are going to go down, rates are going to go down. I guess the interesting thing for me is, well, what do you think is going to happen if rates go down? Buyer demand goes up. That means we turn back more towards the seller market. So the idea of trying to time it and wait is kind of a myth out there. I think at the end of the day, um, find the right house and it's your home and you're going to be in it for more than three, four years. It's going to be a great investment long term. Kenny makes a great point. Time in the market can be tricky. And the longer you wait, the riskier it becomes. Greg McBride, chief financial analyst at Bankrate, says it best. A further drop in mortgage rates could bring a surge of demand, making it tougher to actually buy a house. So what's the bottom line? You have a chance right now to buy before competition ramps up again. Take advantage of it while you can. Waiting might, be, might mean higher prices, more competition, and missed opportunities. If you're thinking about buying, don't wait until it's too late. The market is in a sweet spot right now, and you could be the one to benefit from less competition and better affordability. So as promised, here's three things that you can do to make sure that you're ready so that when you find the perfect home, you're ready to put in an offer and win that home. Number one, meet with a lender ahead of time and get pre-qualified. We've mentioned it before on this channel. Sometimes there might be things on your credit that you can deal with that, that might put you in a better position for better programs, and better rates when it's time to offer. It never hurts to start early on pre-qualification. A little extra time only helps and, and you'll find right away what, what price range is perfect for you. Number two, find and research the right agent ahead of time and hire them. In today's market, you can't just call an agent to show you a property. You actually have to hire them to do that with a full-fledged employment contract. How would you feel if you did all this preparation and then you found a home that you liked and you were forced to sign an employment contract with somebody that you had just met that you hadn't even researched? Take a little time now. Check out some Google reviews. Ask your friends for some referrals. You want to work with someone with experience someone who has access to multiple solutions, somebody who has a track record of providing a high level of service and successful risk mitigation and negotiation for their clients. I'll tell you, opening doors is the smallest and easiest part of the value that a real estate agent brings. Number three, limit your credit usage when you're getting ready to purchase a home. This is a big purchase. And most buyers want to buy at the top end of their qualification. And adding that new car, couch, TV, or vacation might lower what you can afford due to your debt-to-income ratio. Hold off on your credit spending until after close escrow to put yourself in the best possible position for the most options for a home. If you're ready to have a conversation about a purchase, or if you see yourself as a homeowner in the months ahead, visit us at klausteam.com slash first steps, and we can help you find the right home before the market heats up. The good news is getting started is way easier than you think. Thanks for watching. 
And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions and more at state48homeowner.com.